Hi, welcome to this week's videos. This week we're only going to talk about pivot tables. And I'm going to guess that this is a little bit of a relief to you, because if you did last week's exercise, this is probably more or less what you ended up with. So I'm going to assume that you have seen enough new formulas for a week. So this week, no new formulas. We're only going to talk about how to analyze your data using pivot tables. Also, we're not doing the hardware store anymore. I think we've seen enough of the hardware store for a little bit. So this week, we're going to be running a bar. The spreadsheet for the bar is a little bit similar to the hardware case, because we again have an export from a register system where we keep track of everything that we sell in the bar. But we have some more information in this case, because in addition to the dates, the time, the type of beer that we're selling and the quantity, we're also keeping track of who buys the beers. So let's assume all our customers have some sort of loyalty card, so we know exactly who buys what at which time. And that, of course, allows us to do a lot of nice analyses. So with this data, we also have a list of all the beers that we're selling in another worksheet. All the beers that are there, let's assume we just Googled for all the beers and we found a nice list of all beers. So of course, a question that we could ask ourselves is, how many of each of the beer types have we been selling? So we can use a count if function for that. I'm sure this is a pretty familiar function by now. We look in the register log, how many times have we sold this specific beer? Simple, right? You already know that. So question, is this formula actually correct? Can you spot anything that might be wrong with this formula? I'll give you one second to think about it. So I hope you were, you were yelling at your computer screen while I was pausing, because obviously there are a few things that are wrong with this formula. The first thing is that beer's prefix. We don't need it. Excel adds it always if you switch worksheets, but it's actually better to remove it. But something else is wrong with this function. I don't think count if is the right thing to use, because we have a quantity there. So we, what we do with a count if is just count all the rows that are there. That's not we what we want. We want to use the sum if function because we want to have the sum of all those quantities we are selling. So we have to change our function a little bit because now we also need to tell Excel what the column is that we're summing. And if we add that function, then the, func the formula is correct. However, this formula is correct, but something is a little bit inconvenient here, because you see here in this time sold column, we only have zeros at this point, because the list of all the possible beers that we can sell is so long that the first ones just are not occurring. So I have to click sort, I have to go to the ribbon, click sort, say I want to have only the largest numbers on top, and then as you can see, we can see what beers we have exactly been selling. So it's quite a hassle to get everything done. And in addition to that, we could ask more difficult questions. Suppose our boss comes in, even though we changed our business from a hardware store to a beer shop, we still have the same boss. Isn't that interesting? And she asks very interesting questions like, what beers have been most sold after 11 p.m. This is probably interesting to know because you want to know what beers are popular early in the, in the evening and what beers are more popular late at night. So suppose we have to add an analysis like that, it's going to be a little bit cumbersome. Because first of all, we have to add another column saying what, what times are after 11. And your first intuition might be to use an if function there, but it's actually not needed. You can just use a comparison function as a proper formula in Excel. So here we try a first attempt. We say if the time is bigger than 23. However, that's not really working because you see here in this case we have 11 p.m. However, we still get false. And the reason for that is the way that Excel works with times is that it saves the time as the fraction of the day. So 5 p.m. is more or less like 0.7 here. And you can see that if you change the time into a number. So for a proper comparison with times, we have to compare with a time. So we have the time, 23 hours, 0 minutes, and 0 seconds. And if we use that 
as a comparison than we actually get through here in the case where the time is above 11. So I was cheating a little bit. I told you in the beginning of the video that I wouldn't show you any new formulas. This is a new formula, but it, I hope you're going to let this one go because it's very simple and it's only for time comparison. So with this function, we can now add our analysis because we can change our time sold from a sum if into a sum ifs where we use multiple conditions to sum on. We have to change our formula a little bit because how the sum ifs works is we get first the column that we are summing and then a list of conditions. So we pick the quantity column first and then we say we want to have the name of the beer as the first condition. It has to be equal to the first column of the beer worksheet. And then the second condition is our time after 11 p.m. has to be true. So it's quite a long formula, but it gets the job done. However, as you can see here, the formula is now, the, the column is now not sorted yet because it's still sorted in the original order. So if you want to sort it, again, we have to click sort. Here you can see those values are not properly sorted yet. So if we click sort now, something strange happens. Here you see, hey, that is not the correct value. The links again have been updated. And that's because we forgot this time, I hope you were screaming again at the computer screen, we forgot to remove that beers prefix. So if we remove that, then we get the correct result. But that was a lot of work, right? A simple query, what beer do we are best sold after 11 p.m.? We have to add another column, change our formula, and make sure that we don't forget to remove the prefixes and we don't forget to sort. So what I hope that you take away from this video is formulas are meant for calculation. If you're calculating an, a sum or an average, a formula is fine. But as soon as you start to do really analysis, you're diving into your data, you're asking yourself questions like, what's the most popular beer on a Saturday if the temperature is below zero degrees? Something like that. If you're analyzing your data, formulas quickly go out of hand. And I think you saw in this example that that just happened very quickly. So remember, formulas are not for analysis. And of course, then, what is for analysis? Pivot tables. More about pivot tables in the next few videos.